JJJ, you already know it's your boy Joe back at it again, man. Codingface.com. Listen, guys, don't say I never taught you anything, man. So today we're gonna go over, you know, basically event stop propagation and event prevent default, right? And when to use it. This is very important for you guys that are trying to learn JavaScript so you can understand this concept. And yeah, let's get it started. All right, guys. Imagine this. You have a div, right? There's your parent div. And then you have a link inside of it. What happens when, let's say you want to create something, a certain click action on the link as far as, you know, jQuery or just regular JavaScript, right? When you clicked on the link, it's also going to be passed down to the parent, that same action. So, like, let's say an example. Let's say, let's run this once, right? So, we have the parent div. And then we have the link. Now, when you click on the link, it starts, right? And it's okay, it sends you to Google because that's what it was supposed to do. But it basically does element was clicked and the container was clicked. Meaning you clicked on the link and whatever action you put on the div, it also happened there. It also got triggered. Remember that the parent div is on top. And basically, the link is below it. So when you click on the link, automatically, whatever was the parent class, it gets triggered too. So how do you stop that? Very simple, right? You do something like this. Like, let's say we, we wanted to stop the propagation, right? Which means we only want whatever got clicked. So if we only clicked on the link, that's the only action we want to be triggered, right? So we're going to run this again, and we're going to clear this. So if we click this, the only action should be clicked is the, the links, not the parent dips. So let's do this. All right. Now what happened? The element was clicked. Before, it was saying the element was clicked and the container was clicked. So both actions got triggered. Now, let's say we don't want this to actually open up a new link, right, in a new window. So what we will use is something called prevent default. So what this is saying, hey, whatever's the default of this, this tag, this element, cancel it. Don't do that, right? Stop the, the default of it, and basically, whatever you want to give it, that's the new action of it, right? So let's say an example. Let me save this. You... Let's clear this. Boom. All right. Now we're gonna prevent this default. Let's see what happens. You see, we click in it, but it's no longer opening a new window. All right. So this is super useful. Like let's say an example, you're making something in React or whatever framework you're using, and you actually want to stop the default of whatever element it is. It could be a submit form it could be a link it can be anything and all you want to do is prevent the default of it right now event stop propagation what it does is it stops you know basically the action the event to being propagated to everything else on the element right meaning if you click on, on a link inside of a div you don't want this action when you click on it to be passed down to the parent div and so on so on all right, guys, you already know it's your boy Joe back at it again. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like this video, man. And also, take your time, man. Look at the description below. I have a couple of links there. Make sure you go to codingface.com. Also, make sure you click on the links below where I have, of course, like a couple of Udemy courses that I've taken that made me into a developer. So check them out. Trust me. If you look at the comments, a lot of people have bought it. And they're like, oh, my God, thank you, Joe. We love it. All right, guys, I'll see you later.